here with Eric Montero with Sun Life at the Collision Conference. Uh, Eric, you just got off the stage mm -hmm. and you spoke to a group about transformation and how Sun Life has been transforming. Um, transformation is a um, is a challenge for many organizations and it's one that you readily took on in the insurance industry. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what you were trying to achieve with your transformation? Yeah, for sure, thank you. Uh, it's also a challenge for us, by the way, but you know, we're working through it. Uh, we're really trying to achieve three main objectives. Uh, the first one is to really digitize a lot of our existing processes. Actually, I should start with what we're trying to achieve is our purpose, which is to help clients achieve lifetime financial security and live healthier lives. And we realized we needed a digital transformation to get there. So within that, there are three main objectives. The first one is uh, this idea of digitizing existing processes. As a 150-year-old company, we have lots of them and many of them aren't what they should be, they aren't what clients expect them to be. And so really chipping away at every one of them and digitizing those moments is the first one. Yeah. Uh, the second one is to be much more personalized and proactive with clients. And so we realize clients appreciate and value that we know them and we act as if we know them and we understand what they're going through. And the third one is to find new business models. It's an industry that's going through a lot of change, as all fintech, uh, and, and we realized we needed to have some of those new business models in place. Yeah. I'm sure that there were some challenges through that whole process. Um, and you're a 150-year-old company. Mm -hmm. So can you share a little bit about the lessons learned and some of the challenges that you saw going through the transformation? For sure. I'll start with the challenges and I'll talk a little bit about lessons learned because really that's part of the solution to the challenges. The first one is we have a lot of legacy. Yes. We have legacy on our platforms. We have legacy on our systems. We have legacy on our processes. We have legacy on our talent. And overcoming some of that has is, is been a challenge uh, throughout uh, and not one that, again, we're still working through. Uh, the second big challenge is, is prioritization and funding. It, you know, it, it's not like most industries that there's lots of resources laying around. And so to really drive a digital transformation, you have to prioritize resources from other parts of the business and kind of getting through that. In fact, we believe that one of the things that we've done well is actually be able to reallocate resources. Now, some of the lessons learned, I'd say, that help us get there the first one, and honestly the most important one, is start with a client. Uh, transforming for the sake of transforming just isn't going to get us the outcomes we expect, and we would have ran out of steam uh, in the digital transformation. Whereas if you start with a client, and particularly in our case, our purpose with clients, uh, you really energize the organization. It's much easier to prioritize those, those particular initiatives because they go straight at the heart of what we're here to do with, with our clients and for our clients. Uh, the second one is to work uh, much closer with the IT organization. So the reality is IT needs to be a part of the solution, otherwise they're going to be a part of the problem. And given our legacy platforms, infrastructure systems, they need to be a part of the solution. And we've developed, I think, what I'd say is a very good, very collaborative partnership between the business and, and IT. In fact, in many of those initiatives, you can't tell who's who, right? Yeah. The shift to agile, the shift to much more digital approach to to running some of those initiatives. You get into an agile room, and I do a lot, and you go to a scrum to see what's going on, you can't quite tell who's on the business and who's on IT, and that's perfect. Yes. Um, and I say the third lesson learned is a lot of test and learn. Um, we can't, and we try, to basically define a roadmap for five years out and say, what is it gonna look like, and try to get all the, you know, the, the T's dotted and the I's, yeah, or the T's crossed and the I's dotted ahead of time and you just can't. You have to test and learn. A good example of that, and you were just commenting on this um, a little bit earlier, uh, when we started with this insight that clients have a bigger need than just getting the claims paid on the health space, you know, they have a lot of needs that happened before. We don't know that, right? And, and, and therefore, we had to actually go and test and try it out. Same thing when we launched Ella. We didn't really know what clients were going to feel. You know, how is it going to feel to them to have a digital coach tell them what they should be doing? Right. And so instead of actually going off and doing a five-year roadmap for Ella and deploying all that, we said, no, let's just launch it. Let's launch a minimal, what we now call a minimal lovable product. Uh, um, yes, rather yeah, than minimal viable That's product. right. Yes, and we said, let's just uh, d define and launch a minimal lovable product yes. and then learn from it uh, and then evolve. Yes, excellent, excellent. You know, it's interesting, you also talked about Lumino mm -hmm. and how that um, uh, product uh, is in the marketplace. You have a lot of partners mm -hmm. that you're working with in that collaboration and really looking at, you, you looked at where you played, but mm -hmm. recognized from a customer perspective you needed to go back mm -hmm. and in terms of um, 
what, what clients really needed before the actual reimbursement part of That's right. the process to be able to really understand uh, how they were making their, de their decisions and recognizing that they needed help in that regard. Can you talk a little bit about that? Of course, uh, and, and you're absolutely right. And this is a great example. When I say start with the client, yeah. That's what I mean. We call them clients, not customers, because client yeah. is, a, is a vision of client for life, whereas customers tends to be a more transactional thing for us. Um, so we're starting it's with a client. By the way. Yeah, because we like want that. them to be clients for life, yes. right? And, and for us, it started with a client, man, we actually talked to a lot of clients. So yes. we did a lot of design thinking work where it wasn't just research and surveys, but we actually sat down with clients and talked through them. Not only what do they do, but what are they feeling? What are they going through? How do they make decisions? And it became very clear to us that, you know, yes. getting paid for the claim is important, yes. but they had lots of angst and, con and confusion and questions when they were trying to decide what should they do, you know, if they have call it a diabetes problem or wealth management problem or mental health issue, yes. you know, they're very confused about what to do. And then once they figured out how to get help, then deciding where do I go, which providers, which one is better, which one is worse, what can I afford, what can't I afford? And then we help them with that and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so we realized that we could play a much bigger role for them yes. if we started much earlier in the journey. Yes. But again, it came straight from clients. Excellent, excellent. So I want to thank, thank you, Eric, for taking the time and for thanking Sun Life to be able to better enable clients moving forward. Thank you thank for the you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect.